Well, hello there. I know it's been a while, but we're back with another Rail Fan With Me vlog. Today, we are currently highballing toward Terre Haute, Indiana very, very quickly. I'm running a little bit behind because I didn't get this heads up as quickly as I would have liked to. NS8100, the Nickel Plate Heritage Unit, is leading CSX train Q501, which is a Chicago to Nashville train. I am still 20, 25 minutes from Terre Haute, and he is maybe 20 minutes from Terre Haute right now. So I'm gonna need a little luck on my side right now. I'm probably not gonna beat him to Terre Haute. Honestly, we're probably gonna have to go somewhere south of Terre Haute, at least for the first shot. I am gonna try a little bit of a chase here. Um, I don't know if we're actually gonna beat him to Terre Haute though. So we're hurrying, we're doing the best we can, uh, and hopefully this is uh, gonna work out in our favor. I'm not really sure. Um, that was a cop. I uh, don't think he stopped. I don't think he's <laughs> turning around. Um, anyway, I don't think, um, I don't even know what I was saying. We're gonna try to get 501 though. Um, we're gonna get to Terre Haute as quick as we can. Hopefully not get pulled over in the process um, and try to get the Nickel Blade Heritage Unit because I don't think I've ever gotten it leading before, come to think of it. So, see what we can do here. Real fan with me, yeah, it's back. All right, so we have made it to where we're gonna shoot him at. This is Pimento Siding, and I don't know if I can, I can, look at that, okay. As you can see, he has an approach down there in the siding, so he's taking the hole here. There is a Y here that does not get used anymore. It used to go back to Blackhawk Mine, uh, or Farmersburg Mine, it had multiple names. Um, hasn't been used in a long time. The mine closed years ago. Y is still here though, um, and does make for a pretty cool shot. In fact, I'll jump out here real quick because we've got a minute. It's not like I need to set up just yet. Um, as you can see here, the Y comes back into the siding right here. We've got a little pot signal to work with, plus the big signal for the siding frames him real well i like it so we're gonna go ahead and get set up here i don't know what he's meeting or how long he's gonna be here but we're gonna get set up get him here and then i think we're gonna go to sullivan to the coal tower Brought it to a stop. He's gonna meet at least one northbound. I don't know how many, but we're gonna go ahead and move on to Sullivan to make sure that we beat him there because I want the coal power shot. So we will see you at Sullivan. All right, so we've made it to shot number two. There's a 647 in front of him. I finally figured out what he was in the hole for. Past Q500 here on the north side of Sullivan. Uh, Q647 though is in the hole at Crane in front of him. So we're gonna see 647 first. Nothing interesting for power on him. It was just a DC Gvo and an AC 4400. So, but we'll roll him by and then 501 should be shortly after him. You'll see in a moment why I chose Sullivan if you're not familiar with here, stick with it.
Coming up alongside him at Paxton now, and of course the gimbal decides, why be level when I can be sideways for some reason? Not a very long train. I noticed this as I came up alongside him on the highway. He's got to be less than 50 cars. But there's a nice stretch of old 41 here where you can parallel alongside of him for a minute. Um, I was thinking Carlisle would be the next shot with the grain elevator, but I'm not sure we're going to beat him there. You know what? Now that I, now that we're getting ahead of him here, we've still got another two or three miles to Carlisle. I'm pretty sure we're going to beat him. And of course we pass the power in the trees. Hurtage! Uh. That worked out so much better than I thought it would. That looked so hot, and I didn't even think we were gonna make that. It only happened because he had an approach coming up to the north end of Carlisle to meet a GO 59 back here, which is an empty grain train for Shelburne. Didn't mess with the meat, trying to get back in front of him, which we're already back in front of him before we even get to Oaktown here. Um, next shot is going to be the north end of Smith Siding, which is, uh, 11,000 foot siding between Oaktown and Vincennes. Um, good job, Gimbal. Um, so good of a shot. So one of my, probably my favorite shot on this entire line. Um, I don't know if we featured that in a, in a rail fan with me vlog on here yet or not, but if not, we're about to. Um, it's, it's pretty cool. Uh, real high elevation up on this hill. You get him sweeping around this curve. It's nice. It's real nice. It's about the best the CE and D has to offer. Um, so we're going to highball up here for that. Shouldn't have an issue beating him up here. And uh, I don't know if we're going to go any further than that because he does work at Alice Yard and Vincennes. Usually. He may not have any work today. I haven't heard the dispatcher say anything to him about it. So he may not have any work if he doesn't. I think we're going to keep going with him at least for a little bit. Um, we'll see what happens here. So, if he has work, Smith will be it. If he doesn't have work, then you know maybe we'll maybe we'll keep going. We'll see.
All right, so it turns out no work at Alice and Vincent, so the chase is still on. That shot of Smith was hot though, right? Now we are at the south end of Decker siding. You can see the signals back there through the back window. Um, Decker is the first siding south of Vincennes. Not a great shot, but I needed something decent here to bridge the gap between Vincennes and Princeton. So, decent shot here, south end of the siding with the signals. It's got the name on the on the signal box, so it's at least a location marker. Get him here, and then the plan is, I think the last shot is going to be North End Alliance. Right? No, North End Gibson. Whatever it is, it, it's confusing. They've got two sidings on either side of the main there. One of them's new, one of them's old. That is going to be the last shot. Big sweeping curve under a cantilever signal bridge. That's where we're going to leave it, I think, because there's really nothing between Princeton and Evansville shot-wise, and I don't want to go all the way to Evansville if I'm not going to shoot anything between Princeton and Evansville. So, penultimate shot now here at Decker, and we go to Princeton, and that will be the NS8100 chase. Whew, I'm out of breath because I've been running around trying to explore the space here. I looked at a couple of shots north of the signals. The weeds were too tall and it was just, it didn't line up. It didn't look good. Finally, I settled here on the, uh, the northbound signal with the signal box. It's not fantastic. It's definitely not going to be the shot of the chase, but it's something decent. Oh, that's 647. Out. Okay, so 647 was 7,900 feet. 501 just cleared the Purcell detector up here just north of Decker. 2,500 feet. <laughs> I didn't know those short of trains existed in 2022, even with locals. Most of the locals are even longer than that anymore. So, all right, so he's probably about north end of Decker now. So I'm going to shut up and we are going to roll him by here and head to Alliance. I think that's the fastest we've seen him move all day. I can't, I'm a little worried we're not gonna make alliance now. Um, Cause it's not that far down here. Um, and if he's pull, if, if he's booking on him that quick, I know there's a northbound coming. I, I heard that there was a northbound at Princeton a little bit ago. I don't know where this northbound is. I don't know where he's meeting 501 and 647, but clearly 501's not going in at Hazleton for him. So. I don't know. We're we're running as hard as we can right now. Hopefully we make it to Alliance because it's a pretty pretty killer shot and I think it'd be a good way to end this. Look at all this water out here. This is the White River at Hazleton. There's so much water outside of the river. It's ridiculous. We've had a lot of rain and snow around here lately. So it, uh, it's a little wet around here. So, yeah, gonna gonna try to beat him to Hazleton, or not to Hazleton, we're at Hazleton now. Uh, we're gonna try to beat him to Alliance. We don't have that much further to go, so hopefully we can do it. Fingers crossed. I can't cross these fingers very well for some reason. Probably because I'm still cold. Anyway, see you at Alliance, hopefully.
All right, so 501 had to hold up there at the south end of Alliance where we were because 682 was down here. We've relocated to Southern Crossing where they cross the NS here in Princeton. 682 had to get a poke across the diamond onto the single because they're currently doing their pickup at Toyota over here just south of the diamond. 501 had to wait on them to do that and I think there was an NS that went across too. So all that conspired against us here. So we have relocated here to Southern Crossing and this will be the final shot of the day. I thought it was appropriate to get the 8100 crossing home rails in Princeton. So we will see it uh, here at Southern Crossing right now. All right, and that's gonna be it for the 8100 chase. Since we're in Princeton, I'm gonna take a sweep around the NS yard just to be safe, make sure there's nothing cool over there that I'm missing when it's literally right across the street over here. So we're gonna go check that out, see what's happening over there, see what they got for yard power these days, because it's been a few years since I've been down here, to be honest. So we'll see what's going on here. And uh, if nothing's going on on NS, this is probably gonna be the end of the day. So let's see what the NS has to offer. All right, let's find out together if anything. Ooh, they've got a lot of engines over here. Nothing super exciting. An, and the gimbal will not stay level. Lots of GE wide cabs. Oh boy. NS is really living large around here these days. Let's see, we got, what do we got over here? 8041, 4178, 9644, I think is what that is. Yeah, the, the six is kind of faded or covered by something. 8128, and I can't tell what the one behind it is. Yay, five GE wide cabs. Oh boy, NS is living large with the yard power these days. Okay, let's see what, if there's anything over here in East Yard, or there might be something tied down in one of the Princeton yard tracks too. So we'll see what's up happening over here. Maybe something's over switching Toyota right now. I don't know. That's the fun of it. I don't know what's going on. Apparently, NS has been super busy today, but as soon as I get here, apparently they don't have anything. So, tis what it is. All right, we've relocated now from the west end of the yard to technically, I guess, the middle of the yard. Technically, it's the east end of Princeton Yard and the west end of East Yard. Not much in Princeton Yard. Somebody's doing something down there. There's there's guys down there and some auto wrecks. So I don't know what's going on down here. That's an East Yard though. Princeton Yard is over here. East Yard is over here. So essentially what it is, Princeton is Princeton Yard is the original yard here and it used to be the East End of the Siding. At some point or another, I'm not sure when exactly, they added essentially three long siding staging tracks out here that they could just park trains in. Um, and extended the siding as well to past where those end. So now Douglas Siding is 
super long. I'm not sure on the length, but we'll go over here to the east end of East Yard, see if there's anything over there. It seems to be something happening over there. So let's go find out what it is. Aha, so I guess this is 167 tying down over here. As you can see, there is, there's a couple of trains over here. I think the manifest is definitely 167, I would think. And then the auto racks in track, I'm guessing those are in track two. 167 looks like they're in three. Um, I don't know what the auto racks are. That might just be some random repo move. Back when I was in college, I went to college in Vincennes. Back when I was in college, this was my hangout. I love the Southern. And literally, the top of this hill right here, I would literally pull right off over here. There's even a pull-off right here. It was perfect. I'd pull off right here, and you'd have this big, sweeping view of East Yard. Just this beautiful view. I'd just sit here and wait on something to happen. If it was a day I was being lazy and I didn't want to go out and find something, I would just pull off here and wait and see what happened at Princeton. And nine times out of 10, it turned out to be fairly productive doing this. So that was always fun. I kind of miss that, to be honest. Um, I miss coming down here and doing the Southern. Now, they don't, they didn't run many trains back then as it was. They run even less trains now. So I feel like it would be kind of hard to do this regularly down here to, to do anything real um, significant with the Southern um, on a fairly consistent basis. But we're gonna go down here to the east end of East Yard, see if we can see the 167 power, and then we'll dip over here. Toyota is over here. You can see the auto racks back there in the distance. Um, so they've got, a, they've got a little bit of a yard over here where they stage the stuff that goes to and from NS on this end. So we're gonna go over here and check this out, see if um, they're doing any switching over there. It's not road and rail anymore. I think it's Corman now that does the switching. I'm not sure. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe they'll be over here switching. I don't know. We'll find out momentarily. Okay, so I came over here because I saw the lights flashing. The, we're at Toyota now. We, we made an executive decision to come over to Toyota instead of the East End East Yard first. Um, because I saw the lights flashing and I was hoping we could get over here in time to actually see him closer than this. But apparently not. It looks like uh, Grego CEFX SD40. Nothing super exciting, but it is an SD40, I guess. That's kind of cool. But yeah, this is uh, this is apparently what they're switching Toyota with now. I was not aware of this. Let's see if we can get a better angle here as we come up to the crossing. Okay, so yeah, he is, uh, well, there we go. Yeah, he's shoving back into one of those tracks there. So a lot of, a lot of tracks of auto racks over here. But nothing super exciting, especially since there's a fence there. It's hard to shoot anything here. So we'll, uh, we'll head to the east end of East Yard and see what's happening over there. Okay, so we're coming up here on the east end of East Yard. Oof. Not quite sure how that happened. Uh, but coming up here on the east end of East Yard, there's a train in Douglas here east of East Yard. So I don't know if that means... Um, okay, you can see 167 kind of down there. And then those auto racks apparently have nothing on the head end. This train is on the main. I don't know what this is. This can't, this can't be 167 because they were talking about him being tied down in East Yard. So, I'm not really sure what this is because I think 167 is supposed to be the only uh, <laughs> free advertisement for Nexar. Um, I think 167 is supposed to be the only eastbound manifest out here now. So now my curiosity is peaked and we're gonna go over here to East Douglas and see what this train is. I have no idea. Okay, there's two trains over here. That looks like a 223 tied down in the siding with the stacks. What is happening out here? Are, are, are we just parking trains out here? We don't run trains on the Southern anymore. We just park them out here now. What? I'm so confused. <laughs> okay. 
I don't know what is happening right now. Clear that that's got to be a 223 in the siding. There was not power on the west end. Here's the power for this thing, whatever this is. The 7715 and the 9936. 223 apparently extends out to East Douglas though. I don't know what that was though. I don't know what the manifest is supposed to be. But uh, I guess we'll head out here to East Douglas and see 223. Okay, so here's the head end of 223. What we got here? 76, 36, 99, 69, and 1193. I think that's 1193. Um, yeah, 1193. No headlights. Doesn't seem to be a crew. Nothing has a light over there at East Douglas. This is very strange, not gonna lie. This is super strange how they've got both these eastbounds tied down out here. Well, and the headlight's on on the other one down there. <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at right now. Princeton is a cluster right now. There's no way around it. Princeton is a cluster. So there you have it. I think, though, that's going to do it, unless we run into something on the way back north, on the way back home toward Terre Haute and that area. Um, if we do, I'll stop and shoot it for you for the vlog. If not, then we're going to call this a day right here. So I would call this a very productive day. I think we, we did very, very well with that Q501 chase. Very well with it. Um, got pretty much every shot I wanted. I, I don't think I really get screwed out of anything that I really wanted. There was a couple shots I was thinking about, but it wouldn't have worked if I still wanted to get the other shots that I really wanted. So all in all, I'd call it a very successful chase. Uh, I have no complaints whatsoever. Princeton's been fun. Now I'm going to eat my taco tierra. Um, I, I think you can see that down there. So <laughs> Got me some tacos. I cannot go to Princeton without uh, getting Taco Tierra. So, you know, got to do what you got to do. Um, got to get me some tacos when I'm in when I'm in Princeton. So that was Q682 you just saw there. We I kind of ran into him on the way back up here from Princeton. You see this old man here. This is <laughs> old geezer. Yeah, old geezer. This is Brian Train geezer. Yeah, this is Brian Veek here in uh, in Vincennes. You might know him as Grain Express on YouTube. So Brian, uh, how are things going? Well, I can't complain. I caught the nickel plate unit this <laughs> yeah. afternoon, just well, barely yeah. with my drone. Yeah. And, and uh, these are my CPLs. One of these days, I want to get them lit up. Uh, I thought you I found, had I found out I could light them up and not yeah. you know, interfere with railroad operations, and now PTC. Right. So, one of these days. One of these days. I'll do it. We'll have to come back and get a video of that once you've done it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Too many, too many projects and model <laughs> railroading, and I hear that. Yeah. Yeah. So in the good see in the good weather season, it farming gets me busy. So. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you can't if you can't tell, he's a farmer <laughs> by 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 the look and the the Bex hybrids jacket there. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, the dirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I've been making out with a Max semi this afternoon. Got it fixed. Hey, so. you know what? Get it wherever you can. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, I live trackside here, yeah. and um, so I hardly miss a train. I'm, I'm not too lazy to get out of the easy chair and look at it. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I think there's a difference in missing the train and not getting out of the chair. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and actually, this is the second heritage unit that's come south. Mm -hmm. uh, several years ago, maybe now, the Wabash unit was leading an ethanol train. Oh, I forgot about that. Horrible weather, rainy, just nobody really mm -hmm. caught it. There was no heads up because I don't think anybody wanted to get out. Right. But it was cool. Saw it through the window. Well, and then we got the Katy unit up there at Smith oh, that right. one time, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's been a few of them the through B, here. Yeah, the B. 
the NS. Well, yeah, yeah and the NS variety, yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I think that's it. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, then. So we're going to go, I guess we're going to go get dinner or something since I'm here and... We're and you're it. buying so oh yeah yeah, yeah he said he was yeah, buying yeah so. money bags over here with yeah, my yeah. 44 subscribers <laughs> yeah. yeah all right well i even forget to look how many i have <laughs> you got more than that i know that much i, I do it for the fun of it mm -hmm. and if there's one old guy that can't get out and loves to watch him that's what i do it for i don't i don't do it for the, I don't, i'm not monetized right so they can't censor me i guess <laughs> i do it for kids anyway I guess. right <laughs> so. well there you go yeah. so if you haven't already go check out grain express on youtube and see brian's fun stuff that he does around here try to <laughs> try to it's free exactly i think we're gonna call this good thanks for going rail fanning with me and we will see you for the next one don't forget to like subscribe comment share all that fun youtube jazz and until next time, we'll see you.